In problem number 30 of section 2.5, we're asked to find the expected value of an exponentially distributed random variable. Now the exponential distribution is useful in modeling um, of what you can think of as the waiting time between um, independent events. If you have a series of events occurring at roughly a fixed rate, then the exponential distribution kind of says, models the distribution of how long uh, how much time you have until the next event. Um, so the expected value is, can be interpreted as um, on average or how, how much can we expect to wait for the next in a series of independent events to occur if they're occurring roughly at a, um, at a fixed rate. Uh, so the, exponential, or the expected value of any random variable is defined as the integral from negative infinity to infinity, uh, assuming that um, the random variable takes on, is a function from the entire real line, uh, then we, uh, otherwise we just look at whatever domain it's defined on. Of x times f of x, the distribution function, dx. So in this case, it becomes uh, the integral from negative infinity to infinity, but all the values uh, less than x are, or less than zero are equal to zero. So it suffices just to look at the integral from zero to infinity. And uh, here we can substitute in the distribution function. Since we're only looking at positive values, we can take the distribution function to be just lambda. So we have x now times lambda e to the negative lambda x dx. So this now, continue up here, is equal to the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 0 to b of uh, lambda x e to the negative lambda x dx. Now I'm gonna, uh, lambda is just a constant. Um, which I probably should have mentioned this earlier. Lambda is uh, kind of the rate, we can think of as the rate between, rate, um, right, the, the rate at which the independent events occur. Uh, and it must be greater than zero. So, in other words, it's just some constant. We can pull it out. And now we need to evaluate this integral here. And if we use uh, integration by parts, let's let uh, u equal x, so that du is equal to dx. And if we let dv equal now, e to the negative lambda x dx. Then v is equal to uh, negative 1 over lambda uh, times e to the negative lambda x. So this becomes lambda times the limit as b goes to, towards infinity of, now the integral is equal to u times v, so negative 1 over lambda times x times e to the negative lambda x, uh, evaluated from 0 to b, and subtract the integral of v du also from 0 to b. This is a negative, a negative 1 over lambda. That's positive. Uh, v du, so we have an e to the negative lambda x dx. Uh, 
All right, so we've got negative 1 over lambda times x e to the negative lambda x from 0 to b. Plus, now the integral, if we pull the 1 over lambda out, 1 over lambda times the integral from 0 to b of e to the negative lambda x. But that's just negative 1 over lambda e to the negative lambda x, uh, evaluated from 0 to b. Let's see, if we evaluate all these expressions now, uh, we get 1 over lambda times b times e to the negative lambda b minus uh, a minus 1 over lambda, so plus 1 over lambda x, uh, well now x is 0, so we have 0 e to the negative lambda is 0. This whole term just goes to 0. Now we've got plus, uh, we'll have negative 1 over lambda times e to the negative lambda b. And we'll have then minus a minus, uh, so plus 1 over lambda uh, times e to the negative lambda times 0, which is just e to the 0, or just 1. All right, it's getting a little complicated, but this next step should simplify it quite a bit. Now we have the limit as b goes towards infinity of, uh, let's leave this alone for now, 1 over lambda times b times e to the negative lambda b. This term just is go, goes to 0. And let's see. We've got plus or well, minus the limit of uh, 1 over lambda times e to the negative lambda over b as b goes uh, towards infinity. Well, as b goes towards infinity, um, this is just going to get smaller and smaller. Uh, this whole term, uh, as this will be getting bigger and bigger, well, smaller and smaller, uh, but with absolute value larger and larger, which will be negative. If we put that in the denominator, we can see that it'll then be e to a positive number, which will be getting bigger and bigger, and so this whole term will tend towards zero. Uh, so we actually just say that this tends towards zero as well. And then we're left with plus 1 over lambda. And I just realized that I made a mistake back here. Um, we, when we evaluated the integral in the integration by parts step, I took out the 1 over lambda and I pulled it out here. Then when I evaluated this expression, I forgot to include it on the outside. So I'm just going to write really small there. There's should be multiplied by 1 over lambda. So that doesn't affect this term at all because this still goes towards 0 and uh, we're just multiplying by a constant, so it's still 0. Uh, but in the second term, we have 1 over lambda times 1 over lambda. This is actually 1 over lambda squared. All right, so almost there. The only step uh, we have left is to figure out what this limit is. And if we look at it closely, we should be able to actually use L'Hopital's rule. We just might have to rewrite it a little bit. So the limit that we're really interested in is the limit as b goes towards infinity of b times e to the negative lambda b. Uh, everything else is just kind of a constant, so it won't be too hard to figure that out um, after, we, after we compute this. Uh, if we want to use L'Hopital's rule, though, we should probably write it in the form of a fraction. 
So let's write it as the limit as v goes to infinity of v over e to the lambda v. So now we see that as v to tends towards infinity, well, v tends towards infinity. And as v tends towards infinity, the denominator, e to the lambda v, um, also tends towards infinity. So we can uh, go ahead and uh, feel free to apply L'Hopital's rule. So this limit is equal to the limit as v goes towards infinity. Uh, now the derivative of the numerator is with respect to b now is 1. And the limit of the denominator with respect to b is lambda times e to the lambda b. So now uh, as b gets bigger and bigger, it tends towards infinity, the denominator is going to get larger and larger. This will um, mean that the limit is equal, toward, equal to 0. And it kind of makes sense in a way um, if we look back at the original limit. Uh, kind of what this is saying is that, well, if this tends towards 0, it must mean that the, that the denominator is getting bigger and bigger, which, uh, well, the, the denominator is getting bigger with respect to the numerator, which makes sense because the exponential function um, kind of grows faster than the identity function. They're both strictly increasing functions, but the exponential function is going to get bigger a lot quicker than the, um, than the identity function will. So this limit is equal to zero. That means that I can go back and write the final line um, of the problem, which says that the limit as b goes to zero or b, b goes to infinity of this term is zero. So we're left with lambda times just left with one over lambda squared, which equals. 1 over lambda.